We got one more talk for the day. Uh, we're going to wrap it up with some signings tonight. Uh, we got some cool stuff happening up here later on today. Um, but this is our last talk of the day, so we really want to give you all an opportunity to glean this information from our friend Jamal, who comes to us from Plum Grid, great friends of Rackspace. Uh, he's going to be sharing with us SDN virtualization, monitoring, and remediation platforms for OpenStack clouds. So if you will, give him your full attention and give him two claps together, just two, just two claps to welcome him. Go ahead, give it to him. I love it. Go ahead, Jamal, take it away. All right, thank you. Thank you, guys. So just to, uh, this is fine. All right. So just to give you a brief introduction about myself, I am Jamal Arif, just list, and um, I have been with the OpenStack community for some years now, and I started off more on the development side and always on OpenStack networking. So I've seen that how Neutron itself for OpenStack networking has evolved uh, in the past couple of years, two to three years. Uh, currently, I'm working with, as, with Plum Grid as a systems engineer. And uh, mostly, my, my experience and my, uh, I have been actually working with customers, developing their OpenStack clouds, primarily based with, SDN, um, with, a, with an SDN networking. But let's, um, let's go over what uh, I wanted to discuss primarily today. Uh, so most of my experience around uh, with customers has been going through a phase of uh, developing and uh, like designing an SDN-based OpenStack cloud and then helping them operate it, uh, operate it and maintain it in a daily, day, daily processes as well. So today I'm going to talk about what are the different operational issues that come up when you have an OpenStack cloud and how SDN-based visualization tools can help you operate your cloud in a more, much more efficient manner. So I was actually uh, going through, uh, recently going through an OpenStack user survey uh, in which you go get a lot of information that where the OpenStack community as a whole is moving towards. And there are some key facts which were very important to note from how the OpenStack community has developed with the uh, enterprises and telcos and different companies who have actually um, started OpenStack deployments. So I saw that since like a couple of years, uh, they have actually grown from like grown double in from going from a dev, dev phase into a production phase. So right now, there was a like 70% like of the people have deployed OpenStack clouds in their production phase. And most of those production deployments are quite large from scale perspective. So they have uh, something around more than like 30 to 40% of them more than have 10,000 to 10,000 cores. And then there are like 10% of those who have more than 100,000 cores. Similarly, uh, on the instances side, you have like almost 10,000 or 20,000 instances running for more than 40% of these OpenStack cloud distributions. So you see that from a scalability perspective, the OpenStack cloud has really grown since the past couple of years. But First challenge to actually deploy it, that's another thing. How do you continually, continuously maintain it moving forward? That's another big challenge. How, do you, how does the network admins, how does the uh, cloud admins operate your OpenStack cloud in daily to daily operations, go, helping out new customers, maintaining the old customers, uh, meeting your DevOps guys, developers who are using the OpenStack cloud for multiple different operations. How do you actually go through that process? Now, that's, that's a key, key thing over here. Because as the scalability grows, you see that as the scalability grows, you see that within your large-scale OpenStack deployments, you have a lot of different components that have grown and very differently from a physical or legacy uh, network infrastructure. Right now, your infrastructure has number of flying parts, right? You have virtual switches, you have virtual routers, you have NAT capabilities, all in a virtual world, living not at a particular hardware component, but living anywhere within your virtual virtualized environment. Now, if something happens, uh, basic things like 
and that's that's what I have that's what I have figured out with, while connecting with the customers. That very basic things like uh, traffic connectivity between any particular VMs that the developers want to use, it goes down. How do you how do you go by troubleshooting it? How do you analyze it? Do you use custom build tools to operate them? Do you use um, OpenStack Horizon dashboard or OpenStack uh, APIs that are available to you to actually figure out very basic connectivity issues? You cannot get to your VM. Your developer is really, uh, really uh, pushing for like he's he's having problems. Uh, connecting to the, some of the tenant VMs, and you are trying to figure out what's the underlying architecture. What's how do you actually figure out what's what's going on in the underlying architecture? Because previously, it was different for the same guys. It was uh, going to a physical hardware component, using the traditional tools, using traditional tools in different kind of manners, and trying to figure out. Okay, fine. This is this is a switch. This is a router. This is a NAT device, a physical component which we have a problem with. Let's log in, figure out uh, this VLAN or that VLAN is trying to give a problem. How do we figure out, right? So a lot of moving parts within your virtualized environment in the, in the last year deployments. Now, when you actually have a lot of different virtual, virtualized network functions, be it your switches, routers, NAT, advanced uh, virtual firewalls, there's no correlation to your virtual instances to your physical instances. I mean, it's, it, takes, it takes some um, training. It takes to know the expert knowledge around your, around your OpenStack cloud to actually figure out what's the correlation between your physical devices and your virtual devices. Because that you might require while you are troubleshooting your instances. I mean, everything is good when everything is working fine, but once you actually have a problem, you need to figure out some key things around if you are having some, if, if a developer or an external customer is uh, having issues with a bunch of VMs in a particular tenant, where do, where do these VMs exist in the environment? If you have some uh, high bandwidth issue on your, uh, on some of the VMs and some of the instances, but not entirely on the other OpenStack, uh, on the other tenants, how do you figure out that where do these where do the instances live, or which of the tenants or projects or developers are really uh, using high bandwidth or really using really having high traffic uh, connectivity with them? So all these tools in a in a legacy world were already there, but one of the key features where you see that there's still more work or still a lot of uh, custom build, build work needs to be done is around the operational tools to actually run your OpenStack cloud. Now, if you talk about the traditional tools that are already available, most of them uh, have more, more often in tabular format. And I mean, I always joke around that we, we need to actually have a PhD around those to actually figure out what those are. We actually need to be very uh, informative around those, that um, how to figure out if something goes wrong with your troubleshoot cloud. So that's where uh, Plumgrid actually, I mean, that's where we were actually trying to, uh, once we actually went into production clouds and went, discussed with the customers, from their feedback, we went for another product that is known as the Plumgrid Cloud Apex. So with Plumgrid Cloud Apex, it's a, uh, it's an SDN-based visualization platform. It uses an open source uh, iWiser technology. It leverages that technology to actually get all the statistics from your OpenStack cloud, and then give you a single pane view where you can actually interactively see that how your cloud is uh, performing in daily to daily operations. It, the, one of the major features, one of the major uh, drivers behind it was to actually bridge that gap uh, between uh, uh, going through a complete training of months or weeks to actually figure out your OpenStack cloud distribution or using an, a tool to actually, from day one, using it uh, for network operations, for daily maintenances, and these kind of procedures. So if we go uh, a bit more into the details as what are the different features of uh, the cloud Apex, Let's go over them one by one, and we can then, I'll actually at the end go over uh, uh, a very cool video that, uh, that we have, which actually will show you that how large-scale OpenStack deployments uh, can use Plumgrid Cloud Apex product to actually 
help in daily network operations, network operators uh, view. So one of the key features they have is affinity-based GUI. So affinity-based GUI is providing the relationship between your virtual resources and your physical resources. I mean, uh, if you have virtual instances, virtual containers, or virtual VMs, where they do exist in the physical world, and how your physical world actually uh, maps onto your virtual world. So you have, like we talked in the earlier, we have thousands of cores, hundreds of VMs, hundreds of machines in your scale deployment. It takes time if you use uh, the OpenStack Horizon dash, uh, APIs to actually figure out what's the mapping between those, which you would definitely need once you are actually operating your uh, OpenStack cloud. So it, that's more from the network cloud, admin, uh, the network cloud operator's job and not the user's job. So the affinity-based UI actually gives uh, you a correlation between your physical resources and your virtual resources, and similarly your virtual resources to your physical resources. Another important feature is around the self-organizing health status. So with an interactive dashboard um, from, with a single pane view uh, for uh, the network operators, you can actually figure out that it, uh, how your uh, different virtual domains or your different components within your OpenStack cloud are, uh, are currently behaving. So what's the health status of different, act different components within your OpenStack cloud? Now, in a number of... Uh, in a number of activities that, that we had with the customers. Many times you have, I mean, you are a network operator and um, you are you're having a problem with a particular virtual uh, machine or instance in your OpenStack cloud and you want to see that where that instance resides in your, in your uh, data center. Now, the only information that you have right now is its name or its... IP address, be it a private IP address or a MAC address, anything that, that you have with you. So with the cloud-wide search option, you can quickly search it, just, just do a quick search of its IP address or its MAC address then it, or its uh, VM name or the different UUIDs that the Horizon dashboard is, uh, is uh, exposing. And you'll get a, from the cloud-wide e search, you can actually get to the details in, immediately in real time. I'm actually uh, going to show you the demo afterwards, and that would actually uh, give you more info on that. One of the another features is real-time heat maps. So we earlier discussed that around the traffic, uh, around the that how do you how do you make up that how do you manage your traffic bandwidth or traffic connectivity? Like how do you know that how much traffic activity is on each of the virtual domain, or each of the tenants or each of the projects or different users that you're using that they're using uh, your OpenStack cloud? So in case of that, uh, the heat map data actually can allow you to have uh, traffic high, uh, just show you interactively that how each uh, virtual machine or tenant or user or your physical server is uh, having the traffic connectivity. So you can uh, have packets uh, sent and receives, you can have CPU utilization, you can see CPU memory, uh, memory utilization for your physical servers, and all in a single pane view. So from that end, from our network operator's point of view, you can pretty much uh, get all the info just seeing on the dashboard that it that actually opens up. So let me actually go on to the... Um, we have uh, the demo that, that I have, and from the demo, you'll get more idea that exactly how each, uh, each of these uh, different features can be used. So as we log in into the uh, Plumgate Cloud Apex, the first view that you get within the uh, Cloud Apex is the resource view. On the left-hand side of the resource view, you have the virtual domain, the virtual resources view, like what are the tenants, what are the different virtual machines part of your OpenStack cloud. And on the bottom, you have the physical view, that how your physical racks look like. So all the racks are uh, done on the, are, are in a column, are in, the, are in the columns, and each rectangle actually represents the each compute node part of your OpenStack cloud. On that, uh, and then as you actually scroll on each of these uh, physical devices within the, your resource view, you can actually see that what different virtual machines are part of your uh, OpenStack cloud. 
So if you get back and yeah, so let me just exactly show that here. So it actually shows you, you can see that it, it gives you the uh, server name that you have for your compute, uh, the rack that it actually is part of, and the UUID that's part of the OpenStack UUID that it has. So it maps uh, your OpenStack UUIDs to its, to, its, um, to its interface as well. Within the virtual world, you also on, on the top, where your virtual resources are being shown, you can see the same thing, that it's uh, the virtual resources have, you can actually scroll over different VM names, you can scroll over the tenants is part of, and the OpenStack private IPs or public IPs, whichever you are using for, for your uh, use case, it, it gives you all the information around that and, as well. So, uh, so that's how, Within the first resource view, it's giving you all the information from tenant perspective, from virtual instance perspective, and also the physical instances. On the right-hand side, it, uh, there's a details panel. The detail panels allowed you to get all the, uh, all the uh, information around how many for, uh, virtual or how many tenants are part of your uh, OpenStack cluster. Like we talked about in the earlier, you can, I mean, the OpenStack cloud, OpenStack cloud distributions can have 1,000 tenants, uh, 10,000 VMs. So you need to have a view that, that you can actually get to those immediately in a single pane view. So it gives you the information around the tenants, uh, what are the different servers that are actually part of your OpenStack uh, cluster. In the example that we are showing, we have 11 different racks. Uh, 150 servers, part of those uh, OpenStack Cloud, and then we have 1,000 virtual machines with running on top of these uh, compute nodes. So let's go on and uh, talk about each uh, particular feature. So the first feature is the affinity-based query that we talked about, right? So once you actually cl uh, click on any of the physical servers in the physical, uh, on the physical, uh, in the, at the bottom of your resource view, you can actually relate your uh, physical uh, you can relate your physical resources to your virtual resources. So you see that on the top, this physical res uh, server has some VMs which are part of different tenants in the top. So you can see that how the physical world is mapped onto your virtual world and, core, uh, and oppositely as well. So th this uh, physical server has almost, like is, is running in almost six different tenants, and that can allow you that how the distribution is done between the physical world and the virtual world as well. So let's uh, go ahead and uh, go on to the next uh, uh, feature. So this is done on the physical end. If you move on to the virtual end, you can get a similar kind of information from the virtual end as well. So if you click on any tenant, you can see that this tenant has almost 86 virtual machines, and each of these 86 virtual machines are distributed across different servers running in different racks. So that's how you are actually mapping your virtual resources to your physical resources. Now we talked about earlier that in certain instances, it's, uh, if you want to map your virtual resources to your physical resources, you, you have to actually have to go through a number of steps. And that's what, we, that's what I have found interacting with different customers as well that you actually have to go through different steps. Um, you go through an admin workflow and then see that those VMs are uh, mapped onto which uh, compute devices and then try to figure out uh, using a bunch of different, uh, different APIs to actually uh, figure out what's the actual mapping. By using Plungrid Cloud Apex, you can pretty much use the interactive dashboard and from the first resource view map and get the same kind of information by just clicking your way around. And that's, that's, that's a very key thing to have within your, uh, within, from, a, from a network operator kind of point, of point of view. Since the network operator has a single interactive dashboard and it can use this single interactive dashboard to view and operate and then maintain on a daily basis. So within the first resource view, you get all the details. Uh, in the details value pane, you actually get all the details as well. So if we, uh, choose any particular tenant, you see the mapping between the tenant from virtual and physical, and on the right-hand side, you see the details on the tenant itself. So what it says UUID from OpenStack, what its name is, uh, 
the state, what's the state is, and what's the current packet, packet flow in, in that particular domain. So within, within, the, uh, within the OpenStack, uh, you have, I mean, I have seen customers having hundreds to thousands of users. So you need to figure out which user is, I mean, you, ha you should have, from a network operator point of view, you need to have a view where you actually can point out that how many different users uh, are using, uh, what's the traffic activity for each user? How, which one is using really high bandwidth? Which one is using low and not even using at all? So you, you can actually then re allocate your resources accordingly. So the, so the Cloud Apex resource view uh, actually tells you both information, maps the physical to virtual, and then give all the details to the, about that uh, tenant as well, both on the virtual side and on the physical side. So on the details panel, uh, details panel, you see that the information around uh, each tenant, uh, the packet flow for that particular tenant, what are the different virtual machines in that tenant, and what are the different servers in that tenant as well. In addition, you have some additional logs that are being uh, recorded as well for that particular tenant. So if you have some logs which uh, are particular for a, partic for a controller, for a compute perspective, you can pretty much see that different logs are being filled uh, over there as well. So you have a filter tab uh, to actually filter your logs as well, which is again uh, very, uh, this again kind of important from a network operator point of view. So moving on, uh, let's move on to the uh, Heat map, heat map data, which is another important feature. So with the heat map data, what you can do is that from a single interactive dashboard, you can see all the different tenant as part of your OpenStack cloud and how each tenant has a different, uh, has, has a different traffic uh, activity as on his VMs. So you can actually set up metrics based on your own uh, on your own uh, data center activities, whatever your own OpenStack Cloud uh, activities are, and how, how you want to set the matrix, where you can set the matrix on CPU utilization, memory utilization, or packet flow, inflow and outflow. And then you can have an interactive dashboard that, you can, uh, that it can show that what are the different tenants and how each tenant is behaving. Within that uh, heat map uh, options, you also have the ability to actually go into each VM and figure out that what each VM activity is, and then uh, also do uh, also kind of map them as per the heat map data and uh, align them in a way that they have uh, that the highest bandwidth comes on top of highest bandwidth VM are actually aligned in a way that they are aligned in an ascending order. So in this, uh, on this end, it's uh, showing the CPU utilization and memory utilization graphs. So you can also see the same uh, kind of matrix in a graphical manner as well. And this based on the physical servers end. Many of the customers I've gone into discussions which, uh, who need that they, they should have a view that how, many e how, many, uh, how, how much the, uh, this, the computes are actually running, how, what's the memory utilization or CPU utilization for each compute. So this is something that pretty much all the network operator point of view needs to have the information on, that what's the uh, memory utilization for a particular compute. If some compute is really uh, having a lot of VM spawn on it, and what's the current utilization level, if that, because of the high CPU, CPU utilization, are there any errors that I'm seeing? Are there any issues that I'm seeing on those VMs which are based on those particular uh, Hardware, hardware physical devices. So all these are, uh, uh, gives the network operator a quick way to actually troubleshoot and then figure out what are the next steps. So as we, uh, I can actually sh show you some, uh, that how we scale into uh, large data center requirements. So as we actually scale into uh, very large deployments where we have like a lot of different servers where we have, a, like for example, in this case, we have 100 virtual domains, 5,000 virtual machines, and across 15 different servers where you have 200, uh, 15 different racks, and where you have 200 servers per each uh, across those racks. 
you see that even the resource view, can, the map actually sh uh, shrinks down and then gives you an overall view in that case as well. So you get a very interactive dashboard where you can figure out all, use those, all, those features to actually test out and see that where, uh, where your issues, where generally your OpenStack, uh, uh, if there are any issues, what are those VMs or what are those tenants which are actually having the issues with. So that's, uh, that's going through the demo. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. We can actually take a deep down dive into uh, any, uh, any of the features as well. Uh, before we end up, I actually want you to go in, into one more, uh, uh, into one more uh, stuff, which is part of our uh, tool set or operational tools uh, as well. So this is uh, a, a tunnel heat map. Within, so we are an overlay based, uh, and uh, most of the uh, stream vendor outside, and even PlumGrid is an overlay based, has an overlay based uh, network model where we are running in an overlay tunnels based on VXLAN. So all these tunnels uh, are created across different compute hypervisors, and whoever wants to communicate between the hypervisors, if the VMs, if there are tenants which, are, which have east west traffic and different hypervisors, so you create VXLAN based tunnels across them. So this tunnel heat map actually gives you an overview of how your tunnels are looking across your OpenStack cloud. Now, very basic example of uh, traffic connectivity. I mean, like if one VM cannot ping the other VM. How do you go by troubleshooting it? How do you go by seeing that where that VM exists, which virtual network function it is hitting, and how it's not uh, the, the traffic connective, there is no traffic connectivity between the two different VMs. So the tunnel heat map actually gives you an uh, in, in, in interactive um, view of all the VXLAN based tunnels in your, uh, in your OpenStack cloud. And by just seeing it, uh, so it actually has different color modes. So if it's all green, that means that all the tunnels across different hypervisors are all good. If, it, if, it, if a particular tunnel is not working for uh, any particular reason, you have some physical network infrastructure failure at some point, some cabling issues, some hardware issue, you can pretty much see directly from the uh, tunnel heat map that if there's a particular issue with the underlying infrastructure. That, uh, this actually try, helps you, I mean, these are all the tools that help a network administrator, a cloud administrator, to actually figure out how to do, how to actually maintain an OpenStack cloud in day-to-day -day operations and in daily operations. So uh, that's, uh, that's pretty much it from, uh, from my side. Uh, if you have any questions, we can, we can actually go over uh, them now. So we have a we have a booth in the Expo main uh, Expo Center. It's C21, uh, and we have all the demos already running over there. We can get into more deep discussions as well afterwards. Uh, and thank you, thanks thanks for bearing with me. Thank you. Thank you, Jamal. Really appreciate it.